When economists find a social problem of any kind, what we usually do is we think, well, there must be some incentive which we can offer, either a penalty or a reward, which will induce people to act uh, as if they cared about the public good. But economists have been in for some surprises recently. Uh, in Haifa, in Israel, the parents were coming late to pick up their kids at the school, and so the schools uh, decided they would impose a fine on parents coming late. There were 16 of the schools, and in seven of them they imposed the fine, and in the rest they imposed no fine at all. They just put a message on the door. It said, as of Saturday, if you pick up your kids more than 10 minutes late, you will have to pay 10 Israeli shekels uh, as a fine. Uh, and then they waited to see what happened. And what happened surprised everyone, because parents became, came later to pick up their kids. In fact, twice as many parents came late to pick up their kids in the schools which had the fine. Well, that led economists to start scratching their head, because what's going on? Why did people respond negatively to the fine? Uh, well, uh, there's some obvious answers that economists will have to think about now. The most obvious answer is this. Before, the parents were f feeling obligated. They should come on time because it's inconveniencing to the teachers if they come late. Uh, or maybe their kid would be worried if they came late. They had a moral obligation to come late, and they tried to come late. Of course, maybe there's traffic or some problem which prevented them. Now, the school offers a wonderful deal. Look, here, if you pay 10 Israeli shekels, you can be late. Uh, so lateness became a commodity, something you could buy, just like a shirt or anything else. And for a good many parents, 10 Israeli shekels was not so much, and so they decided, okay, now we can purchase lateness. Uh, but we have, I think, a pretty good explanation of what happened. But it's a big wake-up call for economists now that we think about public policy, because the idea of the Israeli parents coming later when they were fined is an affirmation of the fact that those parents were basically good people. They weren't entirely selfish. They were people who had a moral obligation to do well by the teachers. Now, in economics, as you know, the standard assumption is that we just uh, assume everybody is entirely selfish. Now, of course, we don't think that. We don't think that about ourselves in relationship to our friends and our children and parents. But we assume it as a discipline. And it has led us to ignore the possibility that sometimes when we try to use monetary incentives to induce people to do the right thing, it will it will reduce their desire to do the right thing for ethical reasons. In other words, it will displace their moral reasoning in favor of a reasoning which is more appropriate for shopping and not appropriate for dealing with your children's uh, teachers and so on. Uh, this becomes very important when we think of problems that are hard to solve by laws and incentives. In the world today, we're facing a series of really pressing problems. For example, everything from political violence to the spread of epidemic disease to global warming. Uh, these are problems which we face in all of our societies. And there are, I think, probably some economists who think that it's possible to devise clever incentives so that we can address these problems. Uh, I think incentives are essential to this process, and we must have incentives uh, to try to uh, um, improve these problems and uh, address them. But the idea that we could ever address these problems, the ones that I mentioned and many others, just through the use of incentives seems to me to be fanciful. And it's also very dangerous, because in our public discussions, at least economists seem to say, well, really, we don't care about the values that people have, because uh, even if people are selfish, we can design a society in which will work pretty well. Well, the news is, economists, meaning me and other economists, the news is for us that's not true. We can no longer count on the invisible hand of Adam Smith to organize society among selfish people to work well as a society. We have always been facing at Adam Smith's time to today, but even more so in the future. We've been facing problems in which we need to have a moral citizenry, perhaps a diverse one with d different values and so on, but we have to count on people trying to do the right thing. This poses a problem because we have to have then a public discussion about which of these values we should promote as a matter of governance and try to avoid the paternalism which has been associated with these kinds of methods in the past.